Eric Shelton had an easy answer he could have given. He chose the other way, and I kind of liked it. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also happen to offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in case you hadn't heard. The winter meetings got going yesterday in Nashville, Tennessee. The first full day of, I can't really call them events. I've covered a whole bunch of these, and it's just a bunch of people walking around. Okay, I think there are a lot of misconceptions about this thing that everyone's running into the lobby and look, everyone, there's Scott Boris giving out secrets and they run over and talk to Uncle Scott and see what he's got. Nothing of the kind occurs. The people who are standing in this lobby, I'm sorry for the aside, I just want to throw this in. The people who are standing in this lobby are these Pardon the description, but these these geeky looking college kids who just graduated from some Ivy League place and they're holding one of those really thin uh, binders that look like they're only holding one piece of paper because they're so thin. And they're just looking around to see if there's someone that's just going to come and ask them if they want to do work in baseball. And they don't care if it's for the uh, Reno Roosters or whatever. They just want to get into baseball because they feel they've got all the answers. They're the next Billy Bean or whatever. That's what the winter meetings are. And then you go and at the end of the day, your team has you come and talk to the GM. The GM tells you there's absolutely nothing going on. And I'll see you again tomorrow at four o'clock. And you go back up to the room the next day and at four o'clock. He tells you there's absolutely nothing going on. We're getting ready for the rule five. There's just it's it's not anything like what the public perception of that is. What was the subject today again? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shelton spoke for the first time really since near the end of the 2023 season and raised a a few different subjects, among them that O'Neill Cruz is back to playing an instructional ball. That's good news, obviously. Talked some about Paul Skeens and his future, said some Pretty realistic sounding things about Skeens in terms of why he wouldn't open the season in Pittsburgh, such as being at LSU, being at the college level. He's never pitched on five days rest. He's never pitched on six days rest. So to throw him into a big league rotation, yeah, in college, you pitch on the weekends. Some good stuff there, but nothing jumped out for me quite like this. Well, I'm thinking that, I mean, we're going to need to add, obviously, because, I mean, we ended the year with with just two traditional starters. Obviously, nothing controversial there. For anyone to acknowledge that the Pirates are in need of starting pitching is the equivalent of pulling open the drapes and saying, hey, look, the sky is blue. They had Mitch Keller and Johan Oviedo to end the season. And then they were just left with Mitch. So, yeah, they need starting pitching. The manager further brought up that one of the things that's going to be needed was for some of these younger pitchers. And I've been talking about them a lot on this show. I don't think anyone should be off the hook for Rowanzi Contreras, Luis Ortiz, Quinn Priester, and others. But for the manager to talk about it, look, I might be... Reaching here or over reading, but I've been around Shelton for his entire tenure. I feel like I've gotten to know him and I feel like these are topics that even as recently as a year or two ago, he would have said, talk to Ben, go talk to Ben, meaning, of course, Ben Charrington. Well, guess what? We're entering year five of Charrington and Shelton and most everybody else that came in with them. But the one guy who's probably the most on the hook, if you want to call it that, is Shelton. He's on the field. And there's a perception, even if it's not reality, there's a very real and I think widely accepted perception that the Pirates have the talent at hand to 
compete, possibly even contend. Now, a lot of things would have to go right. Cruz would have to be 100% healthy. I mean, Cruz would have to look like he did two years ago. You'd have to see some additional steadiness from Jack Sawinski. You'd have to, there's just, there's just a lot of stuff that has to go right. Okay. But it's not impossible. It's not inconceivable. It's not laughable the way it's been for such a long time now. What this sounds like or feels like to me is this manager making sure that if this is going to be the perception, let's uh, make sure that it's also at least close to the reality. Because I'm next. Not many managers around Major League Baseball. Heck, not many managers or head coaches in any sport survive five years with the same team. Some sports are more fickle than others. And baseball is kind of like in that Goldilocks range. But it's still not comfortable for a manager to be in one spot and to do nothing but lose. And that, of course, is all that's happened under Shelton. It doesn't matter if it's his fault. It doesn't matter if it isn't his fault. He's the one, I think, that's going to have most of the attention on him. So if he says anything, even if it's in the form that you just heard it from him, that that's telling me he's he's into it. And you're not going to see any other... What was that dude's name? That waiver dude guy. I already forgot. Josh something. No, I'm being serious. I can't remember it. But those kinds of experiments, you know, where you just bring in somebody off waivers and you throw them out there for two straight weeks of at bats and they're complete garbage. And then you get rid of them and you do it with somebody else. That's the kind of thing where the manager has to push back, even if it's something that the GM thinks is a good idea. Hey, hang on a second. Four years we've been doing that. Okay. Fifth year. Now you got to start putting up some W's if you don't mind. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone and you do the rest it's a ton of fun it's a great meal and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in pittsburgh north shore tavern right across federal street from pnc park your front door your car your bike your computer your gun Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit projectchildsafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Today's J1Q comes from Ethan, who says, Hey, DK, any thoughts on Jack Flaherty? Uh, any chance he gets a bounce back with the Pirates like Jose Quintana and Tyler Anderson did? I definitely think it'd be a good move for them to add him. I just don't want it to be the only or even the biggest move at starting pitcher. Flaherty, for anybody who doesn't know, is a free agent. He's 28 years old, former first-round pick now. Nine years ago, the Cardinals, who did make it with the Cardinals. He's been with the parent club for parts of six years. Career 3.75 ERA, which should have you excited, except that this past season, he had a 4.99 total between the Cardinals and the Orioles, and he didn't do well at all with the Orioles at 6.75. Now, you can say what you want about anybody going to the AL East. Some of that is fantasy land. Some of it is real. But either way, it wasn't a great 2023 for him, and it especially wasn't great, I feel, in the area of a career high 66 walks. And I'm also not nuts about the fact that in 2022, he was limited to just 36 innings. 
on one hand, it's good to see him come back and make 27 starts as he did. I don't have to tell anybody who follows baseball closely how much executives value that. A lot of them will actually look only at that figure and say, yeah, we need him because we need to fill up X number of innings. But the fact is that in addition to the walks, uh, he was hit. You know, he was giving up solid contact pretty much throughout. So where do you look at him? Where do you stack him in your order? You sounded like you put him pretty low as a priority. In which case, why are we even talking about him? Because if he's a oh if he's a four or a five in the Pirates hierarchy, then that means they're getting guys who are gonna be better or even markedly better. And those are the ones that we should be looking at and talking about. This doesn't excite me. Rich Hill coming back wouldn't excite me. The kind of thing that would excite me is if those two guys that you're talking about, Quintana and Anderson, and what happened to them, yeah, they, they, they came here, but it was on one-year, seven-digit deals that were very much not only affordable for the Pirates, but also completely risk-free. And I don't think that's what would happen here with Flaherty. From what I understand, the Cardinals are at least talking about possibly bringing him back and doing so as an extension. And if that discussion even becomes serious, then you can forget about the Pirates because the Pirates aren't going to go more than one year on somebody coming off a season like that. I really don't think they will. But here's what you should think about. If they do, then he is going to be that guy that you don't want him to be. He is going to rank that highly on the rotation. And from there, what the Pirates might do is what I think a lot of people are afraid of, which is just bring in two or three of those guys and say, well, look at this. This is an upgrade over what we did last season or the year before since we only brought one or two of those guys in before. Now we're going to bring in three or four and just let the chips fall where they may in Bradenton. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. 